In a previous video, we talked about the way general graph transformations for curves happen. So we talked about the six main types of transformation that we can occur. And we looked at a very simple example of them. How they worked, what it looked like after the transformation, and how we could make it. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at three bigger examples where we're combining more than one type of transformation on a graph. Now, just a quick refresher. This was what we said last time for the different types of transformations that exist. So we've got y equals af of x, and what this does is it affects the graph in the way that it stretches or squashes it in y. So if a is bigger than 1, so size of a is bigger than 1, it stretches it in y, and if it's between 1 and 0, it squashes it. <clears throat> and this was how our points changed. The point would change from xy to x, comma, ay. Y equals f of ax, stretches or squashes it in x, again dependent on the size of a, but it's the opposite to what the y was. So in the x, if it's between 1 and 0, it stretches it in x rather than squashes it, and if it's bigger than 1, it squashes it in that case. And our points change via this method here, xy became 1 over a times x, comma y. Y equals f of x plus a, shifts it up or down in y by a value of a, shifts the points from xy to x, comma y plus a, and y equals f of x plus a, where the a is in the bracket on the x, it shifts it left or right in x, but by negative a. So what that means is that if this was a positive value here, instead of shifting it to the right, as an instinct would say, it actually shifts it down, so shifts it to the left, and vice versa. And it follows this pattern here, that xy becomes x minus a, comma y. y equals negative f of x reflects everything in the x-axis, so xy goes to x, comma, negative y. And y equals f of minus x reflects everything in the y-axis, so xy goes to negative x, comma, y. <coughs> they were the six key transformations that we've been looking at and that we were working on. Now, we could take any generic function of this form, y equals a, f of bx plus c plus d, and transform them. Now, when we are transforming graphs, there's no point in doing every single step in one go. We have to think of it in terms of different steps. And there are four steps to think of in total. The first step is look at what transformation happens to the x immediately. Do that first. Then, do the plus c, so do whatever gets added to the x next. The next step to do would be the equivalent of what the a is. So whatever's outside the f of x multiplying it, that would be your third step. And the fourth step would be the plus d. Now a good way to think about this is actually in terms of bod mass. So bod mass tells us what to do the brackets first. Well. The f of x, yes, it means function of x, but technically this is in a bracket, so think of doing that bit first, and then apply bod mass within it. So division, multiplication bits first, then addition, subtraction, so this bit here. Then after that, it's the multiply, divide bit in front of the f of x first, and then you add or subtract afterwards. Break it down, you'll nail it every time. So, a couple of examples of this. Imagine I've got this curve here. So this is my curve, y equals f of x. And I want to transform this and sketch the curve y equals 2 f of x plus 3. Think of the transformations in terms of the logical steps. So the first one is anything inside the bracket. Well, this time, it's just an x. There's no transformation happening there. Great. I then look at what's going on outside. First transformation I'm going to do is the 2 f of x. Second part is then the adding, so I'm then going to do the plus 3. Now, a good way to break this down is to do it step by step. So if you do a diagram for each step, that is perfectly fine. You just have to make sure we highlight the final diagram and we know that that's what we're indicating as a final answer. So if I was to do a first diagram for this first step here, for step 1, I know that y equals 2f of x, this 2 stretches the curve. So it stretches everything in y. It's not going to change the general shape, so my curve's still going to look something like this. Cut the y-axis there, cut the x-axis and go back up there. My x-coordinates are not going to change, so where it cuts the x-axis isn't going to change. And my point that was here, the x-value is not going to change. What this does, though, is stretches the y. So this 2 gets doubled, so this one goes from negative 2, 2 to negative 2, 4. And where it intercepts the y-axis, doubles again, so it goes from negative 2 down to negative 4. That's step 1 of our transformations. Let's label that. There's the first step. The second step is the plus 3. Now this, plus 3, takes everything and shifts it up by 3. Think back to our general rules. That's what we said. Plus something here shifts the whole thing up. So this entire graph is still going to be the same. It's still going to be the same generic shape. The 
only thing that's different is that the whole thing is now going to shift up by three. Now, key thing to remember is when you sketch these graphs in your final part, mark on every single key point that you can possibly calculate accurately. So this point here we can calculate, this one we'll be able to mark on. These two here may not be on the x-axis anymore, but we can still accurately calculate the coordinates, so it's worth marking them on as well. So our general shape doesn't change, so the curve still comes down like that, still goes here, so it cuts through the y-axis and then cuts off. Our y-axis cut was at negative 4, it's gone up by 3, so it's now at negative 1. Our point here was at negative 2,4, that's now gone up 3 as well, so it's now gone to negative 2, 7. The key thing are these two here. These x-axis cuts, the roots, are no longer roots anymore of the function. They've shifted up, but they've both shifted up by the same amount. So they've both shifted up by 3. So this one here is no longer at negative 1, 0, it's at negative 1, 3. And this one here is shifted up to 3, 3. Now, that there is the final sketch, because that's us done our second transformation. So we know that y equals 2 f of x plus 3 is given in this diagram here. And that's us. Done it. Key thing, label the points as I mentioned. Make sure you label the graph. So tell them exactly what it is you're labeling and what it is you've sketched. Tell them you know it's this function. Y equals 2f of x plus 3. Break it down in the steps nice and easy. Let's have a look at another example. Got this curve here. Nice looking little curve. Cuts through negative 6. Touches the x-axis at 2. Cuts through the y at 2 and has a turning point up here, a maximum of negative 2 comma 3. I want to sketch why it was f of bracket 2x minus 1. Again, start with what's in the brackets. So we say to say, right, is there any transformation in here I need to do first? There is. Think board mass, anything multiplying first, there's my first transformation, the 2x. My second one is then this bit here, the minus 1 there. That's the order we do it in, and that just makes it so much easier for ourselves. So the first thing we have to say to ourselves is, right, what does that first transformation do? So y equals f of 2x, that's the first bit. That 2x, think back to our rules. Stretches or squashes it in x, but remember it's bigger than 1, so it squashes it. It doesn't stretch it, it squashes it. So all of our x points get halved and go in. So our graph still, again, looks in that same generic shape like that, but all of our x values squash in a bit. So the negative 6 squashes in at half cent, so it goes to negative 3. This 1 here squashes in at 2 here, squashes in well to 1. The y-axis intercept stays the same, that's not going to change. And our turning point, the y value of it doesn't change, but the x squashes in as well. So it goes to negative 1, 3. So there's transformation number 1, first part of it. Second part of it is now this minus 1 here. Now again, think back to what we said happens when we've got something along those lines. That kind of transformation shifts the, the graph left or right, but again, it goes against our instinct. If it's add, it shifts down. If it's a minus, it shifts up. So this one here being minus one, it takes this first graph, shifts everything up by one. So what happens is that the graph then suddenly becomes something like this. Turn and point to there, turns back there, and then goes to there. So all of our points shift up one. So our point that was at negative 3 goes up to negative 2. My turning point that was at negative 1, 3 shifts onto the y-axis. So I know it cuts there at 3. This point here that was at 2 on the y-axis actually now moves up 1 and goes to 1, 2. And this one here that was at 1 on the x-axis goes back up to 2 there. And that right there is what my final curve looks like. Make sure we label it why it was f of 2x minus 1. We've labelled all the key points, we've done as much as we can with that graph, and we've finished our transformation. Again, fairly straightforward if we follow the steps. And even if there's more than two transformations, like there is in this one, we can still nail it every time by following the steps. Again, first thing, look in the bracket. Is there one there? Yes, there is. It's a negative x, that's my first transformation. <coughs> then look at if there's anything multiplying the f. Well, there's a negative here, so that's definitely a transformation. There's my second. And then my third is to add two. So there's my third transformation. So I've got three steps this time, not just two. So I take my first step and I do it. 
So negative x, again, that just reflects the whole thing in the y-axis. So the curve looks exactly the same, just pointing the opposite direction. So these points here go from 1 and 3 to negative 3 down here and negative 1 here. This point that was at negative 2 goes there to 2. My y-axis intercept stays the same, it's at 6. And my turning point, which was at 2, negative 1, is now at negative 2, negative 1. So that's my first transformation. My second one is the negative part in front of it. But we know again, from looking back at our notes and back at the note at the start of the slides, that sort of transformation just reflects the entire thing in the x-axis, so it rotates and flips it in there. So the curve, instead of coming down and up, goes up like that, and then down. So it's just flipped like this. x-axis intersteps stay the same, so it's still at 2. That's at negative 1. That's at negative 3. We cut at 6 before. All that happens is the sine reverses, so that goes to negative 6. X coordinate of this turning point here stays the same, so it's still negative 2. My Y one's value flips, so it goes from negative 1 to 1. There's my second transformation. Third transformation is I add 2. So the entire thing shifts up by 2 in the Y direction in this case. And this is the final part of my transformation, so this is the part where we have to make sure we get everything labelled correctly. Shift everything up by 2. Again, my generic curve stays the same. It's going to cut below the x-axis, I know that. So it's going to be there. My turning point, which is at negative 2, 1, shifts up 2, so it's going to stay at negative 2 in x, but go up to 3. My y-axis intercept was at negative 6, it goes up 2, it's now at negative 4. All three of my roots have all shifted up by 2 now. So they're all still the same height. Yeah, there and there. My x axis, my x values, sorry, is still the same. 2, 2. The only difference is my y values now I are no longer 0. They're all up at 2. So again, I've marked on all my key bits of information. Last step is just to make sure you tell them what it's called. So we've done every single step there for that one, and every transformation, one at a time, and built it up. Now, ideal scenario is we can maybe get to a point where we could do a couple of transformations each time. So we might be able to do something like these two transformations together in one graph. But, take it step by step, do it one at a time. And just remember to do them in this order. Our bracket bit first with bod mass, then numbers in front of the f of x, then the plus at the end, and follow our key rules that are here. This is a vital skill that we need to know.